All right, so in this video, I'm going to argue that uh, discrimination is at best a very partial explanation of why it is that uh, gay people have such higher rates of suicide than do straight people. And this video is going to focus on the LGB people. It's going to, as far as I can, use data just on them and not on uh, trans people because I think that's a pretty distinct group of people. Though in a few cases, the surveys include trans people as well, but even then they make up only a minority of uh, LGBT people, so it's not that problematic. But anyway... Uh, to begin with, it's worth noting that if you think about what constitutes discrimination, a lot of the stuff involved, ostracizing someone, insulting them, harming them emotionally or physically, a lot of this is basically just bullying. And because of the similarity, I think that information about bullying is informative uh, when it comes to thinking about discrimination. And to be specific, uh, what I have in mind is that you know, there's a pretty good association between bullying and attempting suicide. A one standard deviation increase in bullying predicts a 68% increase in the odds of someone attempting suicide. But most of that is not because bullying causes suicide. We know this because you can look at twin studies, and what they do is they control in the first place for genes and the family environment, and in this case also psychopathology that pre-existed being bullied. And when you control for all of those things, now a standard deviation increase in bullying predicts only a 25% increase in the odds of attempting suicide. And so roughly only a third of the sort of just general association between bullying and suicide is even plausibly causal. Now, sexual minorities attempt suicide at a rate that is something like three times the rate that heterosexuals do. And given the weak effect that bullying has on suicide, in order for bullying to be the full explanation of the elevated LGB suicide rate, the average sort of sexual minority person would need to be bullied at a level that fewer than one in 100,000 heterosexuals are. And that's obviously insane and not reality. And in fact, I mean, being discriminated against isn't that common among those gay people who have attempted suicide. So in a meta-analysis of 15 studies, what they found was that the vast majority, 74% of LGBT youth, uh, and youth here means up to the age of 25, who have attempted suicide, um, that 74% of them answer no when they're asked if they've personally been the victim of various sorts of anti-LGBT discrimination and bullying. And of course, even for that 26% that said that they had been victimized, we shouldn't assume that that victimization caused their suicide attempt, since as we've seen, the majority of the association between this kind of victimization and suicide attempts is not actually causal. That discrimination does not completely explain these elevated suicide rates is also evidenced by several studies finding that sexual orientation continues to be a risk factor for suicide after self-reported victimization is controlled for. So this study from 1999, for instance, found that homosexuality continues to be a risk factor such that having a kind of sexual minority orientation is associated with more than a doubling in the risk of a recent suicide attempt, even after controlling for uh, both drug use, which you might think would be a reaction to being uh, very discriminated against, and also a direct scale measuring the degree to which someone has been the victim of uh, violent discrimination. A 2012 study found, when looking at data on over 2,000 students attending a high school in San Francisco, that LGB sexual orientation was associated with a 2.6 times elevated risk for suicide, even after controlling for self-reported victimization, race, gender, and drug use, and here victimization in a broader sense. And Similarly, a 2016 study found that LGB status uh, significantly predicted, again, drug use, but more importantly here, suicide risk, even after controlling for self-reported victimization of discrimination uh, in a large sample of American gay youth living in Appalachia. Uh, it's also worth noting that the suicide rate of homosexuals is far greater than average, even when only looking at those homosexuals who claim they have not significantly been victimized by discrimination. So for instance, a 2015 study analyzed data on over 8,000 gay Canadian men and asked their participants about experiences of bullying, sexual violence, verbal abuse, physical violence, and discrimination at work. And while experiences of marginalization did correlate with suicidal behavior, the rate of suicidal ideation, or thinking about committing suicide, among those who reported having experienced no discrimination was roughly twice that of heterosexual Canadian men. Similarly, as you can see in this chart here, a 2010 paper found a very high rate of suicide attempt, even among gay adolescents who self-reported having experienced low levels of LGBT-related uh, school victimization. And once again, I should add that the suicide rate of non-bullied LGB individuals should not be taken to represent what the suicide rate of them would be in general if we got rid of discrimination, because individuals who experience little bullying generally have better health than those who are heavily bullied for reasons independent of bullying itself and reasons that pre-exist the bullying. Another irrelevant observation is that it's been noted that looking at self-reported happiness from the general social survey, uh, we find that 
happiness among homosexuals in the United States has declined uh, since the 80s. Over the same time period, we've seen a huge decrease in anti-gay discrimination and a large increase in gay legal rights, uh, but all this progress seemingly uh, hasn't done much for the psychological well-being uh, of homosexuals. And we find something similar if we return to suicide rates. So a 2021 paper used survey data from Gallup and they divided their data into three different age cohorts. And what they found was that the rate of lifetime suicide attempt had increased so that it was 21% among gay people born between 1956 and 63, 21% increased to 24% among those born between 74 and 81, and that 24% figure increased again to 30% among those born between 1990 and 97. And this change is especially striking given that people born in the 50s have had a lot more time to accumulate lifetime suicide attempts uh, than have people in the 90s. Uh, another paper, 2020 paper looking at data on almost 100,000 LGBT vets found that the rate of suicide mortality, so this isn't just attempts, this is actual successful, you know, killed yourself stuff, uh, that's been basically constant between 2006 and 2017 after going up and down, kind of oscillating back and forth uh, in the early 2000s. Turning from vets to data on adolescents, this 2020 paper that found that between 1995 and 2017, the trend in how the rate of suicide attempt was changing did not differ between LGB and heterosexual adolescents, implying the gap between the two uh, remained stagnant. Now we get somewhat conflicting findings from this 2020 paper, which looked at data from Delaware, Illinois, Massachusetts, Maine, North Dakota, and Rhode Island. What they found was that the trend in the gap of the suicide rate depended on how sexuality was being measured. So if you measured it in terms of identity, then what you would find is that the gap between heterosexual kids and LGB kids decreased from a factor of 5.2 in 2009 to 3.8 in 2017. On the other hand, if instead of asking kids about how they identify, you ask them about who they're actually having sex with, then we find that in 2009, non-hetero behaving kids were 2.6 times as likely as hetero behaving kids to have attempted suicide, and by 2017, this figure had increased to 3.3. Now that said, no matter how you measure it, neither of these changes were statistically significant, and so this paper doesn't provide very strong evidence either way. So looking at all the data as a whole that I've just gone through, I think it's fair to say that the evidence suggests that the gay-straight suicide gap has probably not narrowed over time, and the absolute rate of suicide among gay people has either remained the same or increased. Now, the suicide rate of homosexuals in gay-friendly areas also gives us reason to doubt that their mental states and problems are the result of discrimination. All the data suggests that, if anything, homosexuals in leftist nations and cities are at a relatively high risk of suicide, higher than is average for just gay people in general in the United States. Now, this may be surprising. You might say, well, you know, with this time trend data and this kind of geographic data, bullying does have some effect. So why isn't this data reflecting that? I would just speculate here, and I would say that these findings can be reconciled if we say that, well, maybe the subcultures that gay people tend to establish in left-wing communities are even more damaging to mental health than is being bullied. And that's just one uh, speculation, but obviously, you know, the data is what the data is, and so you do have to come up with some explanation that's going to reconcile the total set of facts. So regardless, you know, on the basis of the various lines of evidence that I've reviewed in this video, uh, it seems likely that discrimination either causally explains only a modest fraction of the straight LGB suicide gap, uh, or close to none of it. Now, as is well known, non-heterosexualities have increased in popularity in recent years, uh, and the fact that suicide rates for non-heterosexual people are remaining so high, even as we've created a world in which increasingly normal people identify as LGB, and T for that matter, uh, and a culture which is generally accepting of homosexuality is cause for, I think, substantial concern. It may be that abnormal sexualities, at least as they're currently being manifested in culture, cause uh, deficits in mental health. And to the degree that that is plausible, we should view this change in sexuality that we're seeing in society, at least insofar as it's real and reflects actual changes in underlying sexuality and not just and not just more people coming out of the closet, so to speak, to the degree that it's real, it seems like a problem then. And looking at the data that I've presented here, I think that it's hard not to reflect on the fact that in the past, we had a set of norms such that homosexuals were evidently no less happy than they are now, uh, but their numbers were not rapidly gaining. And so, you know, I'm naturally inclined towards a fairly liberal attitude about homosexuality, but the fact that their mental life is not improving while their numbers are rapidly gaining in a world where we've adopted as a culture an extremely left-wing set of values and norms pertaining to homosexuality, uh, I think should make anyone a little bit more sympathetic towards a more right-wing approach to the issue. Anyway, that's the video. If you want to look at some of the sources, uh, there's a text version of this 
with hyperlinks linked in the description. Consider liking and commenting if you enjoyed the video. Uh, consider materially supporting the channel if you are a big fan of it in general. And in either case, uh, thanks for watching.